Hello, and thanks for coming along to And We Have an Office Dog, the digital agency podcast where we talk to agency owner directors and learn more about what makes them tick. From the things that make them similar to the things they'd rather have known sooner, where they've had success, and where they've learned some hard lessons. All will be revealed with your host, Chris Simmons, the agency coach, and he'll be talking to a different awesome agency person in each episode, asking them four questions and seeing where the conversation takes us over the next 25 minutes. Okay, so let us begin. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, voiceover guy. And on the podcast, I'm lucky enough to be uh, talking to Dave Hooper all the way from L.A. area, Dave? Did we just say? Yep, yeah, L.A. area, um, running an agency called uh, Build a Better Website or Build a Better Web dot site. Um, Dave, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me, Chris. It's a it's a pleasure. Um, and I appreciate you coming on in the morning, you know, kids to feed, get them ready for school and running a business at the same time. Um, I'm surprised yeah. you look as young as you do. <laughs> yeah, well, the coffee's still kicking in here, so uh, there I'm go. good. There we go. Um, so, so, Dave, tell us a little bit about the business, uh, just in case there's someone who's desperate for a brand new, brilliant website and they can only think of one place to go. Why should they buy from you? <laughs> Well, yeah, the uh, <clears throat> the business is called Build a Better Website, and as the name suggests, you know we do automobile repair. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we <laughs> actually build uh, better websites. It is sort of on the nose, as they say, but uh, yeah, I think uh, it, uh, after my history and doing uh, my journey to get here, I kind of came to the realization that uh, there are ways to build a better website. So. Uh, well, yeah. hopefully we'll learn a few of these lessons without taking some IP away during during the the um, the recording here. So, how long's the agency been going? So, I started it in 2020, right before the pandemic. So, nice um, timing, well done. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure, but uh, yeah, in retrospect, it was good timing. Yeah. So, at the beginning of the pandemic, presumably you didn't need to worry about office office costs because for obvious <laughs> reasons and um, that's a nice way to start a little bit of extra surplus cash there and um, so yeah. what what's um what's the cut do, do you have a niche do you do you build specific types of sites specific technologies what's the if i was to you know come along with with a big big truckload of cash and i wanted a website what would it be <laughs> built in yeah so um we primarily <clears throat> pardon me we focus on small business and entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, um, it's a it's an area of business that is the hardest to get started because there are so many costs to yeah. starting a business. And I've uh, noticed a trend of lots of people who work in corporate want out. You know, they become <laughs> yeah, corporate refugees of sorts, you know, and, and then they look at, well, what how, how can I do this? And. Um, and I kind of did it myself. So I, I sort of I'm in their shoes as it, as it were. But uh, I noticed all the expenses. Um, mm. they, they total up and, and it makes it hard. And, and frankly, all the services favor midsize and big business. So um, I saw that there was a, an opening. That's awesome, and I, and I'm guessing the people that that you that you work with in a in a in a nice way, they're really thankful for the opportunity to be able to get something that's usually outpriced, should we say? Um, I, I I know what you mean with with uh, with websites in particular and and digital marketing services to a degree. Is that if there's a there's a almost like a price barrier in many in many services, anything anything below that barrier is usually terrible, uh, and anything above that barrier is unattainable but but fine for for their needs um and it's very easy to have a nice looking website you know you get your free wordpress thing you get your one dollar 99 hosting a month and you throw uh, a theme on top of it and you think that that's good enough and you know it's not when you're running when you're running your own business eventually it, it sort of falls down and things like that but um the the cost usually precludes you from 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 having anything that's that's decent so um nice nice market area to be in and i know that there's an awful lot of uh entrepreneurs um over that side of this over that side of the world so i'm sure you're not going to be uh, too short of leads um which is a good sign um so <clears throat> what do you think has been one of the biggest successes since you started running the agency then 
Well, uh, I think I kind of uh, came across an idea, sort of my pricing model and working, um, sort of the short description is in a, uh, a subscription style mm. where I, I routinely say, um, you know, I don't think a static website really does uh, a good job for a business. I think mm. um, not just for SEO purposes or, you know, I think signaling to the internet that you're still open for business and things are happening there. I think having uh, some kind of evolution on your website is important. Uh, certainly the the initial design or the redesign is important. Uh, you have to host it. I, you know, I'll always argue that really good hosting is a good idea, um, if nothing else for SEO, because Google likes fast sites. So, um, but I, I kind of bundle everything up. I look at a year for a business and I say, okay, mm -hmm. you need the redesign, you need hosting. Certainly we run all manner of reporting and <clears throat> uptime monitoring and, yeah. uh, you know, all the, all the stuff that I think, uh, equals uh, a working website that does well for a business. And then I just divide it evenly by 12. So just to use round numbers, you know, rather than charge, say, 2400 bucks for a website and all those services, I just charge 200 bucks a month. And I don't ask for a big fee up front. There's no deposit up front. Okay. So this is me paying it forward in a sense. Yeah. Um, because I think a lot of people have been burned by web people. Uh, I can't tell you how many times people have said, oh, I had a guy and he disappeared on me. I don't understand, uh, you know, mm -hmm. what happens, yeah. you know, it does put me at a disadvantage at first, but this kind of, uh, um, makes them feel a little comfortable to get started. I can actually have my website and I'll build it in month one and then we'll launch it in month two. And their ROI is right behind them. You know what I mean? Like they get, yeah. they can actually have a chance uh, for their website to work for them, which I think it can. You know, if it's done. Right. Yeah, I, I like. Well, based on the the, um, the the market area that you're 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 aiming for, that's that sounds like a really easy no brainer kind of sale. Um, in many senses, I'm guessing you know there's complexities to it, and it's not as cheap as that when you when you want an ecom thing or some kind of fancy functionality. But yeah, <laughs> you're exactly it's, right. It's, it, it certainly lowers the it certainly lowers the risk profile. It certainly lowers the, um, uh, the, the increases the comfort, um, which is again, if you like, you say if you've been burned by someone in the past, then those sorts of things are often a lot easier to to, to handle, which is great. So it, it it feels like a lot longer ago than in reality it really was. But when you set the agency up, um, if you could go back in time now. And you know, give yourself a little bit of advice based on things you've learned in the last three and a bit years. What what would you what would you advise uh, younger and probably ever so slightly more sprightly self? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, my sort of regret was not starting this sooner. I think uh, a lot of times with young people or people who haven't done this before, there's a lot of fear, and and I pick that up with business owners as well. You know, like it's it's a lot, right? You're wearing all the hats. You know, I'm working in the business, working on the business, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I think um, don't be afraid to experiment and try ideas. Um, you know, having I kind of came through more of a corporate. Well, I struggled through corporate, which is what brought me here, and I can mm -hmm. talk about that. But uh, I think. Uh, it should be okay to try to uh, think outside the box and do yeah. uh, do it, and and don't be afraid to experiment. It's hard to experiment with real uh, customers, <laughs> you know, because you need that to work. But don't be afraid to, you know, just jump in, and do it. Did would you have listened to your own advice? Um. Yeah, I so uh, just as a bit of history, um, mm -hmm. I had a whole career in music. And my my dad was a jingle writer, and I sort of grew up in, in recording studios. And then um, I played drums with um, some famous people and toured the world. And and I, I sort of studied jazz and improvisation. And I never really thought there was a correlation or a parallel with uh, music and tech. But I would say that um, that part of uh, nurturing your creative process and improvisation, I, I would say has now served me well, because I would, I, I got recruited by Microsoft, and I worked there. And I was sort of bouncing against the walls in there, because corporate is very structured and process oriented, um, which is I understand why, but uh, it still wasn't easy for me. And, uh, 
And then uh, later work, um, I was actually working at Facebook as a web designer right before the pandemic. And uh, same thing, very expensive, big teams, very, um, mm. I, I use the term stiff. I mean, it, it, it's just very straightforward. Um, I was the guy in the room asking the questions like, why can't we just make the big change that we need? And mm. there were all manner of reasons, like there's legacy and we have tens of thousands of users that can't uh, handle big changes. Anyway, um, so yeah, I think uh, coming out of it and uh, sort of reverse engineering things or just building out of sheer logic, I, uh, I mm. questioned the logic for things uh, and I just decided to do it different. So yeah. I just did it. And uh, yeah, it was a bit of a roll of the dice, but uh, you know, still still here. So things are going um, well. Fo slight follow-up question to that. You mentioned about like working in corporate and larger businesses and having kind of that stiffness and things. And obviously there are reasons for it for obvious, you know, there you can't change one thing just because you fancy it, fancy it and 10,000 people are affected. But how would you, as your as your business grows, and I'm sure it will, as your business grows, how do you intend to sort of tackle the need to not be inflexible whilst also having that kind of same um, requirement, I guess, to have a consistent service, consistent language, consistent communication and output and things like that? So how, 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 have you had that conversation internally yet? Are you... Yeah, yeah. So it's a great question. Um, I think remaining open to new ideas gets harder and harder as you get older. And I'm not in my 20s anymore, you know, so I think uh, making an effort to welcome in the new ideas. I mean, artificial intelligence has been the biggest one lately, yeah. um, you know, and, and a lot of people are afraid of it. Um, I think uh, for me, from my perspective, I sort of think, you know, agencies, businesses that use it uh, will overtake those who don't. I don't think it will actually take our jobs. Mm. I'm not sure that's the prediction uh, per se, though there are a lot of tools that do a lot of the things yeah. that an agency does. Um, but I think if in the hands of a professional, someone with experience, I think it can propel your business and, and it's a waste of time mm. to fear it and worry and uh, be paralyzed by it, right? Just yeah. embrace it and go. So I, I'd say generally, I hope I'm answering your question. I tend to ramble, but you know, I think <laughs> just do, keep, keep your mind open and and take on the new ideas. It's not, uh, you yeah. know. So, yeah. so um, let's say you've got 300 clients. They've all got their diff subscriptions, different tiers and things like that. They've all got the different things that need to be done. Um, mm -hmm. Client comes along and says, right, I really need all of these extra things now. Um, and it's, you know, it's, you've got to provision the time for that. You've got to manage the, 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 the scaling as, as, as things, things happen. And I, and I guess part of the need for process will be, you know, literally being able to deliver, deliver that without impacting other clients, but you'll also need, you'll also have an aspect of it where you kind of want to go, sure. Yeah, absolutely. We, this is, this is, this is this flexibility, this need to, to embrace changes in our wheelhouse. Yeah. We're going to work on that. Um, yeah. you, 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 there's going to be a time when you're going to have to sort of go, right, late nights, <laughs> early mornings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's funny because then process comes right back to haunt you in those cases. Yeah. yeah. No, boy, you're touching on all the right things. Yes. So that's not that dissimilar to my situation now. I, I sort of took it on myself to try to automate and make things efficient uh, at, to the best I possibly could mm. because... I saw so much inefficiency in the big eight, big agencies, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's a study in how much can one or two or three people do, but you are absolutely right. And I, I want to build in um, scalability for my clients. You know, if, if they just come on and we're starting them with a landing page, because that's the, the bare minimum, right? Yeah. You know, so hopefully we're doing right by them. Their business is growing. There will come a time and like, now I need a full website or now I need e-com or I want to mm -hmm. integrate with my CRM. Like there's all sorts of new tech that they need. That's actually a good, that's, that's a, a feature, not a bug for my company, right? So uh, I want to scale with them. I want to um, help them. Uh, of course, it means I want, I, I'm going to charge them more along the way for more services, yeah, but yeah, yeah. um well, that, as they naturally, say, it's always that easier to... that that's the case, I'd hope. Yeah. But, um, you know, now um, 
you know, with the, the pandemic sort of forced everyone to be more comfortable or get used to working remotely, you know, mm-hmm. having um, a team that can scale up, uh, making sure you've got the right people in place that have a flexibility of mm-hmm. time, uh, being able to delegate, uh, delegate, delegate, yep. you know, as much as possible. Uh, I find if you're a control freak, this is very difficult, right? Oh, and yeah. I, I kind of like the collaborative process. I really thrive on it. Maybe remnants of my time as in the music industry, and that is very much collaborative. Yeah, so, you can't really. Um, but yeah, from you me. just got to be ready. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I don't agree. I, I mean, I personally found um, letting go of, of things difficult, but delegation is is a large part of becoming moving from that management leader to a real leader. Um, and as a business grows, you need to be flexible enough to do that. And and I think that that's a, a nice trait to have, especially if it's you know if you if you naturally got it, you naturally got it, which is nice. Um, so since you started, is there anything that you kind of sort of regret? And as soon as you did it, you went, no, nope, we're never doing this again. This is the last time we're ever taking on this type of job or we're never going to do it this way ever again. What what was the story? Uh, well, you know, I think I, despite reading books and hearing podcasters and people talk about um, this idea of sometimes there are the clients that uh, take up most of your time or an inordinate amount of time. Uh, and they say you should let those people go, or or tr- don't let them, uh, you know, do that. It, it's tough when you're getting started and you need revenue. And I, I, looking back, I I feel like there was a lot of uh, of my time that I want back. <laughs> you know, just uh, clients that aren't the right fit. And and yes, high class problems, of course. If I've got clients that I, you know, yeah. but I think, um, you know, I do think that that's sage advice. I I, I think. Um, You'll find, you know, everyone's vetting each other, right? Mm-hmm. You you meet them, um, you as an agency owner, you're vetting clients as well to find yeah. out, is this going to be the right personality type? Um, I don't do things in a very corporate way. So people, I need to dictate that to them. I need to let them know, you know, yeah. like I am not a, a suit, as they say, you know, I, I, I'm i a creative. I, I want to do this in a, in a very uh, creative way. And if you're on board, then we're going to have fun. Yeah. You know, so. and, I, and, and, and I, and I, Totally agree with you. I think at early doors, it's almost impossible to say no to anything that comes in for the obvious reason you need cash in order to grow. That's that. It's a given. It's almost a rite of passage when you're running an agency. Um, mm-hmm. Knowing when the line is that you need to draw to start saying no, difficult to come up with because it becomes uh, like an addiction. Um, that you know the, the 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 prize of the win, the contract signing feels great. You know it in your heart. It's not going to go that well, but you feel great for that five minutes or so. Um, I think a lot of it comes down to kind of pre-qualification with your marketing, uh, pre-qualification with your tone of voice and that authenticity and consistent approach with how you speak and how you behave and how you publish things on social media and things like that. People know what they're getting before you know you, you get there. You know, marketing is what happen, happens when people talk about you not in the room. Exactly, um, and if that's the person, that Jeff Bezos can... or somebody said that, yeah, but I think it was, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm doing a version of paraphrasing and coming up, yeah. coming off as my own. I can't remember who said it, but I know someone did say it. I yeah. definitely just said it though. Um... You did, yeah. That's Chris Simmons. Yes. There you go, Chris Simmons, uh, 2023. Um, uh-huh. So, um, you know, if you if you've got this authentic approach, then that almost qualifies out quite a lot of people who wouldn't be a fit because they kind of feel oh, I can't push this guy around or I, uh, you know, but I, I don't want to work in that way and that sort of stuff. And hopefully that kind of, kind of helps, but knowing when to say no is tough. Really tough. No, I, I agree. And I think, uh, I have some fellow agency owners and we've had this conversation. Um, our latest sort of iteration, uh, idea that we're coming up with is more of a, uh, we've been calling it a discovery page, but, um, it's sort of your contact page mm-hmm. with your contact form on it. But with more, you know, so um, a video at the top, um, maybe a long form video, you know, in in a world where people like short, uh, yeah. you know, short videos. But, you know, something that really dictates this is how I work. This is how how it goes, mm. you know, and then the the contact form isn't just name and email and phone number. It's 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 more. Mm. And so it's part of the vetting process. You know, if after watching the video, people will very much have 
uh, a quick idea of, yeah, this is not my person or, okay, yeah. this is cool. You know, I, 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 can, I yeah, understand I this. Mm. And then they answer more questions. It's actually a little bit more. And so it, it helps the process on so many fronts. So you, you're helping the, the customer either move on and find the right person. So mm -hmm. you're doing them a solid or you're um, bringing them in with more, more um, with more pro um, their expectations are set a little more accurately. Yep. And then um, you can kind of hit the ground running, you know, so it kind of advances the conversation, uh, a meeting or two, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then uh, that's been big because I, even my clients find uh, somebody that has a very high end service, they get asked for the, the lower end versions of their service and they constantly have to say no. Yeah, and that's an easy one, right? You just say, well, you know, maybe on your form, what's your starting budget and make that starting number really high, yeah. indicating like, okay, yeah, yeah I just yeah. needed this little thing, you know, anyhow, but that those are some of the more out of the box creative ways of doing it because 99% of websites just have a contact page, just give us your stuff, we'll have a phone call or whatever. And, well, I mean, uh, I, I, as a, as a, uh, as a business owner who works building agencies with agency owners, did some market research. And this was anecdotal, you know, me clicking around the internet, should we say, mm -hmm. big old list of agencies to have a look at their websites. Uh, the ones that had contact pages had just a form and no other way to contact anyone. And personally, I find that really, uh, I might still fill in the form, but it's nice to know there's a telephone number or an email address or something along those lines. Um, most of the email addresses didn't work. Most of the email addresses <laughs> were like info at, so they weren't really personalized. The forms yeah. were just like name, email, message. Like there wasn't any kind of, and 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 you can tell that um, that there's not been much thought gone into it. And they'll take any lead that they can because very clearly they're making it hard to get their own leads in. Um, but you know, I, I like the idea of like this kind of pre-qualification discovery style form it's it's a, it's a good move so yeah i think i you i like what you were saying there about uh you know people can pick up on wow you've actually thought this through the 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 cleverness i think um people underestimate you know or they they uh play people for a fool or they they think you know they don't think that someone will see through your shenanigans, you know, like just do it right. You know, yeah. say so I, I, and I, I find myself saying to business owners, especially small business owners, because they're the stakeholders. They're the ones who are passionate about their business. Right. Yeah. I said, okay, maybe you're uncomfortable on camera, but, uh, you, the most powerful thing you can do is say in your own words, this is me. This is what I do. I'm very good at it. If you're a, B and C, I can help you. Let's have a conversation far more than some nicely designed brochure, you know, on their website, you know, say it, it personalizes the website to, to the degree that it can be personal. And if your call to action is set up a meeting, whether it's a zoom meeting or whatever, uh, it will happen, yeah. you know, and then people will know, you know, versus, well, I filled out some contact forms, you know, and then people say, now, which agency are you from? Cause I was shopping today and I filled out 10 and, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that's a that's a not a good start. I, I, a... I completely agree. I completely agree. I wish more people would do it like us. Um, Dave, <laughs> people are listening across the world, probably all 333 million Americans listening to this podcast right now. What is your one piece of advice for anyone who's wanting to start their own digital agency? Wow. Uh, well, uh, I would say um, try, you know, everyone uh, needs a bit of an a niche or a um, something that differentiates them. So um, whatever that is, do your best to capitalize on that. Mm -hmm. You know, declare what it is that makes someone want to hire you versus someone else. And and there is going to be, uh, you know, the right uh, bit of uh, collection of people, population of people mm -hmm. for whom you're perfect for. So yeah. you know. Uh, it, not conforming to uh, every other uh, agency that does it the way yeah. they do it. You so know, I would say just don't sell try to do it your way. To everyone, <laughs> yeah, sell something yeah. to the right people.
Yeah. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it translates, right? I mean, that's that thing, you know, whatever. If you are if you do what you're passionate about, it won't feel like work, mm-hmm. right? So um, that's, that's what I noticed coming out of Facebook, uh, I, you know, Lining Zuckerberg's pocket was fine, and it, and it, it adds to my credibility with what I do. But that was his dream, not mine. Yeah. So I think that's uh, that's who I am. And if I can help someone else who's kind of in their own version of of my truth, then uh, you know I think I can really help them. That's awesome, Dave. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Wonderful to speak to you, and I hope you have a lovely morning whilst I'm entering my evening. Oh, thank you so much, Chris. It was a pleasure. Ha, <laughs> ha,